Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Davis. And I feel pretty silly introducing Bud at this point, since I think most of us have a, a good idea of who Bud is. But if you can just dial back your knowledge a little bit, I'll try to do what I can. Um, it's, when I think about Bud, one of the pieces in this anthology is called The Best Kept Secret in America. And it's about the city of Austin back when it was still a Groover's paradise. And I think that title, that whole idea of being one of America's best kept secrets really applies to Bud, who for all of his strengths as a writer, has never really received his just due. And I think part of the reason for that is because Bud's personal life has been so extraordinary. Uh, one of the reviewers for this book, Ben Fountain, noted that uh, Shrake seems to have packed about six lifetimes worth of living into one. And early in his reporting career, very early on, uh, Bud witnessed a white riot in the wake of the Brown v. Board U.S. Supreme Court decision. And then a few months or a few years later, he spent a day as Muhammad Ali's chauffeur. Uh, and he was, Bud was driving the Cadillac convertible when Ali decided that he wanted to investigate a riot in Houston. And Bud did need a little help from the champ escaping from that one. And, and Bud has also had a hand in naming the Dallas Cowboys. He hired Frank Sinatra to photograph a boxing match for Sports Illustrated. He hit on Gina Lola Brigida in a New York bar not realizing who she was. <laughs> he was briefly a political prisoner in Argentina. He was the longtime significant other to Texas Governor Ann Richards. He was playing golf with Willie Nelson the day the IRS decided to stage its raid. And back in Dallas in 1963, Bud was partying with the right-wing oil millionaires who sincerely believed that communists were transmitting radio signals into John F. Kennedy's brain. And at the same time, Bud was dating Jack Ruby's star stripper. And in fact, he received a visit from Ruby the day Kennedy was assassinated. So with a life like that, it is, it is easy to sort of overshadow your, your writing. And through it all, Bud has kept very busy writing for newspapers, for Sports Illustrated, movies, novels. And he, but he's never had the blockbuster novel or the blockbuster movie that many people felt would come to him at one day. And that's where you get into this part of him being kind of a secret still in some ways. But Bud did end up with the nice consolation prize, which is co-authoring Harvey Penick's Little Red Book. And along the way, Bud has earned a reputation as a writer's writer. And I want to talk just a minute about this idea of what being a writer's writer means, because to some people, I think it means that you're a difficult writer in some way, like an architect's architect might design a building that doesn't have a front door or something like that. But many of us here do know already that writers, above all, are very good readers. And so when you have the respect of other writers, it really does mean something. And I think it's instructive in this regard to consider the opinion of legendary Harper's editor, Willie Morris. And during his tenure at the magazine, Willie uh, published Norman Mailer's On the Steps of the Pentagon, which won a Pulitzer Prize in book form. He also published Seymour Hersh's Me Lai Story, another Pulitzer winner. And also appearing in Harper's during that time were William Styron, Truman Capote, Donna Tartt, Robert Penn Warren, Larry L. King, David Halberstam, and many others, including this story by Bud called Land of the Permanent Wave, about a trip through East Texas in the big thicket. And Willie Morris wrote later that Bud's story was one of two pieces among many that gave me special pride. Shrake's story struck a chord in me that I've never quite forgotten, having to do with how clean, funny, and lambent prose caught the mood of the moment in the country and mirrored with great felicity what we were trying to do at Harper's. To me, few finer magazine essays have ever been written. Willie's comments about Bud's were published in Willie Morris's memoir a few years ago, so they're reasonably well known. But I want to take you all back behind the scenes here to our archives, um, because we have a lot of great stuff there that Bud has donated in his lifetime of his writing archives. And working with this material, we like to sort of take the high road and talk about the successive manuscript drafts and how you can study the changes and things like that. But the real fun really is reading people's letters. And um, we have a great number of court, uh, letters from Bud, as GW mentioned, hundreds and hundreds between Bud and Larry L. King. And we've gotten some interesting letters in the archives that Bud's received from other writers over the years. I just want to share parts of a couple of these with you. After Bud's 1962 novel, But Not For Love, was published, Herb Wind at The New Yorker sent him a letter saying that the book recalled for me something of the mood and the shape of Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises. 
you have a great deal of talent, bud, and I have a feeling that as fine as this first book is, you will go on to do some really outstanding things in fiction. That's the book that uh, Bud said earlier that made him feel like throwing up when he read the manuscript. And another letter in the Shrake archives is from Gay Talese, who was responding to a chapter of Blessed McGill that was excerpted in Sports Illustrated in 1968. Talese wrote, I just finished reading The Buffalo Hunt from your new novel, and I am very, very impressed. What got to me was the drive of the underwriting, the simply told tale that builds as it goes, a really successful piece of work. Humor, too, in that fantastic knowledge of hunters and the hunted. You have a lot going for you, and I wish you well with the book. And I'll just read one more. This is from David Halberstam, reacting to the publication of Strange Peaches in 1972. Halberstam wrote, As you know, I thought Blessed McGill was one of the two or three best novels of the last five years, and I think Strange Peaches is even better. More ambitious, funnier, wilder. It seems to me that you have reached very far and pulled it off. I think one of the things that you'll see in this book is that Bud's writing from 40 years ago retains its vibrancy, its immediacy, and its relevance. And that's a feat that few writers can manage. And when you see Bud's recent work, which includes two stage plays and three novels just since the year 2000, you'll see that he's going as strong as ever, perhaps even more so. And so now it's my honor to welcome a man I personally believe will go down in history as one of the greatest writers to emerge from Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Bud Shrake.